What's happening everybody out here coming at you from the engine room here in Five Ball Motorsports. Uh, right now as you can see back there uh, my engine is up on the engine stand and uh, Joe's gonna uh, get ready to start assembling it and uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity to show all you guys and uh, you know give you a close look at what this engine looks like uh, before we start putting it together. So let's go in there and take a close look. Okay so here it is. Uh, this is a uh, short block that I bought from Livinoise. Uh, this is a Pro Series 12 to 1 engine. Um, this is an engine that uh, is a plasma bore block. Uh, the, I decided not to go with sleeves. Uh, this engine is rated to 1,000 horsepower, and uh, I felt that that was enough for my needs. But, uh, but take a look. Uh, these pistons, uh, these are forged pistons, and um, a lot of people are using diamond pistons these days, but these are Ross pistons. I'll give you a close look at the piston. It's a, that's a Ross piston, it's a forged piston. Uh, like I say, this uh, short block is rated to 1,000 horsepower, so uh, it, should, um, it should be able to handle anything that I throw at it. And uh, I'm just gonna flip the engine over now and give you a look at the bottom end. Okay, and what we have here, um, I should be able to get you a look. I got this flashlight. Okay. We've got manly H-beam rods. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, they're manly H-beam rods. They're really strong. And uh, you can get a look at the bottom of the piston there. Uh, I'm told that it's an upgraded wrist pin. And, um, you know, the way the pistons are constructed, uh, they're, they're really, you know, they have stronger skirts. Uh, than you know the stock piston uh, but the forged piston is just much stronger than the stock piston anyway uh, because the uh, stock pistons high view tactic and uh, these pistons are um, forged pistons and you can see uh, all ARP fasteners we got uh, ARP bolts or actually ARP, ARP studs on the main caps you can see them down in there also right and uh, also the rod caps also ARP hardware. So uh, this engine uh, is capable of a thousand horsepower and I'm really looking forward to getting this thing in the car. Another thing I'd like to say too is uh, this is this being a Gen 3 block uh, this is a good opportunity to look at how different it is from a Gen 2 block. And when the Gen 2 this is all kind of solid in here and you'll notice the Gen 3 also uses a larger head bolt. But Gen 3 has this little gusset right in here that you won't see uh, on a Gen 2. Now on a Gen 2, uh, this was basically the stress area. Uh, once you started to make up to like something like 900 horsepower, uh, they would, you would start to see some cracking right in this area. I mean, this is the combustion area uh, and that's the highest stress point. So it seems Ford had the idea of just putting this little gusset in there. But uh, it doesn't really go very far down. It's just a a little bit of a, I don't know if this is, the camera's really picking it up, but you can see it only goes down about a half an inch uh, right there at the top of the bore. So, uh, yeah, just uh, one thing that I noticed, some things a little different about the Gen 3 engine. But, uh, yeah, there it is, guys. 2018 Coyote Gen 3 Pro Series 12 to 1. This is what we're working with. This engine that Joe's got in here, uh, this is an engine that he's assembling for a uh, 03 Cobra outside. Uh, looks like he's got it all together and just try to get you a good good look at it. It looks similar to a coyote just doesn't have any phases over there uh, but this is an aluminum block if I understand uh, correctly uh, the 0304 Terminators had cast iron blocks so I'm, I'm gonna guess that this is a block out of a three valve but uh, yeah get a good look at it yep another really cool build down here at Five Bar Motorsports All right, guys, well, there you have it. Uh, the build on the 2018 Mustang continues. Uh, shortly, Joe uh, will be in here and uh, we'll be in here installing the heads and, you know, just uh, getting the engine together uh, and getting it ready to go into the car. Uh, but as many of you know, um, this is not my only build. Uh, a lot of you guys have asked me what's happening with the house. 
Well, things are progressing over there and I got a lot of video to bring you, so I'm just gonna bring you over there right now. All right, everybody, uh, a lot of you guys have asked me what's happening with the house. Uh, she's uh, been, things have been moving along. As you can see, it's been painted and uh, all the trim has been put around all the, all the gable ends and soffits and stuff like that. Uh, driveway's not in, uh, but a lot of things have happened. So uh, I took a lot of video of what it took to get to this point. So let me take you to that right now. All right, so moving on with the, the construction of the house, uh, you can see here and here, uh, the uh, ends of the gables are, uh, are basically, um, they have some sheathing on them, it's just plywood. So they get wrapped with a moisture wrap. Uh, you can see it says Lennar. Uh, Lennar is the builder of this house. And uh, also inside the house, uh, some uh, insulation is going in. So I'm gonna take you inside, we're gonna take a look at that now. Here's what we have here. We have an R13 uh, that basically goes on, you know, in, in between the, the sort of the interior studs. Uh, this is not what's used against the block, just in the studs around the garage and a couple of other places in the house, right? And then we got these things. You see this? I'm not exactly sure what you call these, these little guys right here, okay? But where you find them, here you can see the R13 and the studs between the house and the garage. But where you find those sort of louver things, you find, you find them around the edges of the house here. It allows uh, air from the soffits to enter in from the soffits outside to ventilate the roof, uh, or the attic space, I should say. And then from there, you know, the, the draft comes up. And if I can get you a shot, there's a shot of one of them and two of them right there in the ceiling. Those are the vents where the air exits and that's how the roof is ventilated. All around the perimeter house, you see sort of those, I don't know what they call them, I really should look it up. I really should know actually, because I've been in construction so long, but uh, well, uh, I'll get you an answer on that. And here is, is what goes against the block. You see that? It's just basically a foil paper. It hasn't been done in the laundry room yet. You can see there, uh, this is a block wall, right? and it basically just gets this foil paper. Now, three quarter inch cavity is what we have here. So we're getting an additional um, R4.1 uh, on the block wall. Uh, that in conjunction with the uh, R value of the block, you get uh, a good R value on the wall. I don't know exactly what they're, they got it calculated to be, but um, that's basically what you get. And if you, if you look around the house, you'll see uh, most of the exterior has been done all around the perimeter walls in the house, all got that foil paper. And the sheetrock has been loaded into the house too. Uh, once the sheetrock is put up on the ceiling, uh, the attic floor will get blow-in insulation. Well, here's something worth mentioning. You see guys, when something like this happens, this is a mistake, okay? They had to open up the slab, they had to saw cut this channel and run this electric wire in the floor like that. They'll eventually patch this with cement this electric wire coming up out of the floor is because there's an island here. Uh, we're in the kitchen, right? And just to give you some orientation, this is the, the breakfast bar, right? Eventually you'll see how this takes shape and where that wire is coming in is gonna be a large island. In that island there's power on both sides. You know, two uh, duplex receptacles on both sides of the island and they forgot to run this wire under the slab prior to the slab going in. I would find it hard to believe that this is standard construction. I think it's silly if they would do this. All they have to do is either run a conduit or, or actually just put the conduit with the wire in it where it's long enough to tie into its box right here. Oh well, that's how it goes sometimes. Okay, so the drywall guys have been in here and uh, they started in the master bathroom and you can see they've, you know, put up uh, what they call tile backer here in the shower area and around the tub area. Now, this is not drywall. Uh, this is wet wall, actually, for lack of a better word. And uh, now that I have the chance, I can actually show you guys what this is. And you have a half inch den shield tile backer. Is the date that it was manufactured, January 6, 2019. Yep. These are the kinds of things 
you don't often get a chance to see these kinds of things, but since we're around, we're able to watch this stuff take place. Okay, today also, they finished putting the sheetrock all throughout the house. You can see the ceiling's up, all the walls are up. We did this in one day, guys. This is really cool. We're getting to completion, really. Uh, this is, this is uh, there's really not much obstructing uh, getting things into the finished stages now. All right, guys, so we stopped in here this evening to see what was going on with the house. You see these guys back here? They're putting the beads around the windows. Uh, this is what, one of the things that they do. They'll put some corner beads uh, around the windows and things like that, uh, which they'll run the stucco up to uh, once they put the finished stucco on the outside of the house. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go take a look at what these guys are doing. All right, here's what we have. We have these little corner beads. Uh, these things basically uh, are, are little kind of uh, dividers that they put in. They build out the stucco and uh, they fill it in and it kind of steps out a little bit. And also over here around the windows too, we put a little bit of a little bead on there and they fill that all in uh, once they they get here with the uh you know the cement or whatever it is they call that and they'll apply that well oh, i'll show you what that's all about and then uh, we'll just come over here oh senor como esta all right so here here's a here's another good look at it yeah, they put this this little corner bead around the windows Let's see all right, here's a good look at, uh, at some of the trim that they put on before the stucco. You see these guys up here working. Yeah, they got a lot to do. And uh, yeah. yeah, look at those guys on stilts. They're doing this backling inside on the drywall. But uh, yeah, these guys are working away, uh, getting this thing ready for stucco. Looking really cool. All right, guys, look at this. Uh, the tapers are in here, uh, just taping up all the joints. I always get a kick out of this. Look at these guys on stilts. <laughs> Como esta, senor? Yeah, I mean, they're taping up all the joints. They're doing a real nice job. Right, guys, I want to show you something. Uh, this is a, an area of, of the house that's going to get some cer ceramic tile. And you can see right in here, if, if I can get that to you guys, up against the wall is an area that uh, uh, is yet to receive the uh, diffraction membrane. And then to this side of it, uh, the membrane has been put down. Um, I want to turn the camera around and give you guys a close look at this. This is really cool. This, from here over, you'll see this is an anti-fracture membrane. Uh, this is a product that's put on the concrete floor before uh, they put the tiles down. And the reason for that is that if you run into a situation like this, where you have a saw cut, right? This is the stress point. This is where the house is uh, expected to move. And what they do is they roll the anti-fracture membrane across the top of it uh, to prevent the tiles from cracking as the house moves. And now this is a really important thing when you have a house that's got so many square footage. Hey, how you doing, bud? Como esta? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to show this to you guys. You can see the floor's all been prepped for the anti-fracture membrane. And here you can see one of the installers. He's just sort of squeegeeing out the primer, prepping the surface to receive the anti-fraction membrane. It's a really great product. Uh, it's very important when you have a house that has tile that runs, you know, you can see in there from the bathroom into the hallway, through the door, uh, into the dining room, and then out into the main area. Uh, it's all one tiled area. And uh, they use this, this membrane right here. Here it is right here. They peel the back, they lay it down, they let it set. And then um, the tile goes on top of that. Great way to build a house. Okay, this is really cool. Uh, the stucco guys are here and uh, they're going all the way around the house uh, doing all the stucco work. Let's go take a look and see what that's all about. All right, there you can see they got their mixer. And they're getting all the material ready. And look at this guy, right? Scooping that stuff up. They kind of just spread it on the wall. Like it's one big trowel. <laughs> Let's see if I get you in close. Look at this guy right here. Look at what this guy's doing. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but I, you know, I don't want to get too close. I don't want to bother these guys. And hey, look at that guy up there. He's got his hawk and he's just prowling away. Laying that stuff in there. You know, this is a talent, guys. This is a skill. This is not easy to do. Uh, I did a little bit of this in my day. Um, it's not easy. It, uh, it takes some skill. So uh, yeah, these guys are doing a really good job. All right, check this guy out. 
this is how they texture the walls. He just throws it on there like that with his trowel. They take the material, it's really loose, it's really soupy, and he just throws it on there. And then he trowels it. And that's basically a knockdown, is what they call it. And uh, that's a pretty typical kind of, kind of texturing work that they do here in Florida on these CBS houses. Uh, some people call it CBS concrete block and stucco, because this is considered stucco. And then concrete block and steel. Either way, uh, this house qualifies for both. Check these guys out, man. This is really cool. Doing a really good job. All right, so we're finished with the stucco. Let me show you. You can see these guys, they finished up with the stucco. Now, there is really not a lot of detail uh, on the front of this house. Uh, some of these houses have, um, you know, nice uh, sort of um, brick facades or stone facades. Uh, this one does not. This just has some detail here uh, coming around the door, the garage door. You can see it up underneath the eaves. Uh, there's a little detail there. And uh, here's what it looks like uh, when they put the corner beads in. They basically, you know, there's just this little lip that comes out and uh, they've got more of a, a, a coarse texture here and a finer texture here. And, uh, you know, it, it's got a little detail to it. It steps out a little bit there, you know, just, uh, just enough to, to make it nice. Uh, but this was the simplest elevation that was available for this house. And uh, I elected to go with this one. Uh, there were some other options that we got that were more important than this. Uh, and this is also, you know, easy maintenance going forward if you have a stone facade uh, you could run into problems later on down the road you know the pieces of stone sometimes they fall off they break uh, you try to find matching pieces you can't find them and then you you know you have to deal with that but uh, this way this is really nothing this is just paint and uh, you know some detail in the stucco and there you have it stucco is all done All right, we decided to stop in just to see uh, the progress that's been, you know, going on with the house here. And uh, you can see right here uh, that blue color. Uh, that's actually a primer uh, that they put on this on the uh, block, the masonry, you know, the stucco that they just put on it. Uh, they'll spray that that um, that blue primer on there just to seal it, and then uh, they come back and they spray the actual color of the house. Here, let me show you that a little bit. <laughs> Look at this guy go. That's awesome, man. Easy and breezy. And the tile set is there inside. Let's go inside and say hello. All right, I just want to show you guys. Here's, uh, here are the tile setters. Oh, hola, como esta? They're doing a really nice job. Uh, I just came, just stopped in to see how they were doing. It looks like they just got started. Uh, we got tile on a 45 going in. Uh, and these guys, tile by tile, they set them, and they do a really good job. Okay, guys, have a nice day. Adios. <laughs> okay, you can see these guys are moving along with the tile. Uh, they're, I don't know, about three quarters of the way into it. It's coming to the bathroom. You can see they got the tub enclosure there, but uh, still, they're working on the floor. And uh, you can see the anti-fracture membrane in there. That's what stops cracks from protruding through the tiles. And then uh, you can come in here, to the master bedroom, take a look at what's going on in here. You can see they got the floor in, they got the walls in almost, the tub deck, and uh, working their way into the water closet. And there again, you can see the anti-fraction membrane. These guys are doing a good job. Okay, so now I'm going to take you inside. Let's go in and take a look. Okay, so as you can see, none of the site work has been done. Uh, they should be here getting started on the driveway pretty soon. And uh, let me just take you inside. As you can see here, a uh, place has been painted uh, probably about a week ago. Uh, it gets a little rough during the construction process, so they'll need to do some touch-up when we get into the finishes, you know, into the finishing stages. But as you can see, uh, here in the garage, the walls have been painted. There's my attic access. And uh, you can see all the doors have been put on. Uh, trim hasn't been painted yet. The tile has been completed and uh, they immediately put this construction paper down to protect it. I kind of like that. There's our laundry room. And uh, here's our kitchen cabinets, right? Countertops are not in yet. 
uh, they're granite. So once they put the cabinets in, uh, they measure, and then it takes a week or two for them to, to be here. We'll cut uh, custom fit and so on. But um, these are the cabinets. And uh, you could also see, uh, we got an upgrade. Uh, we got the crown molding. Now it was just put up yesterday and it hasn't been caulked and painted or anything. Uh, it's still a little rough, but uh, it's in there and it looks really nice. Uh, all the registers and all of, all of those kinds of things have been put on. You can see them throughout the house. And, uh, but the electricians haven't been here yet. All the switches and outlets uh, have not yet been installed. And you come around to this little suite here in the front of the house. This is a nice little spot here. Um, that nice window letting in a lot of light. You can see the bathroom vanity has been set. Uh, the sink has been put in there. Uh, the plumber has not been here yet to install his fixtures. I imagine that uh, once the kitchen countertops have been installed, and then uh, the whole place is ready for the plumber to complete everything. So we'll just come into this part of the house. You can see, uh, looking out the back still, you know, none of the site work has been done. So all of those shrubs are still in the way, blocking the view. But, um, you know, it won't be long until we get to that. And then just coming into here, uh, this is uh, another Hansel and Gretel, just like the other house. There's a bedroom there and a bedroom there and a bathroom in between. Uh, this is a little nicer bathroom than the other one. It's got double sinks. It's got a nice bright window that you can open and ventilate. It's always nice to have that in the bathroom. And then we have our tub with tiled walls instead of the fiberglass enclosure that we had in the other house. And uh, we'll go this way, head into the master suite. And uh, here again, you can see all the doors have been installed. They're not painted yet, but they're all in. Here's the master bedroom. Here's what we'll be looking at from here. Really looking forward to when they do the site work. And then coming into the master bathroom, here's the master closet. That's a really nice, spacious closet. Little linen closet here to the right. My old lady's really happy with that. And then here we have the master bathroom. We have tiled walls, tiled floor. Uh, we do not have the fiberglass uh, shower floor, you know, the shower pan that we had in the other house. We weren't really happy with that. And then this, this bathroom gets a tub. The other house did not have a tub. And we get a window. Double sinks here. Uh, this area here will get a nice big uh, mirror with uh, two light fixtures and a medicine cabinet. And there it is, guys. This is what the house looks like at this point. Uh, really, right now, the biggest thing we're waiting on is the site work. But, um, you know, here inside, the only thing left really is to do a little bit of painting and, uh, you know, the plumbing fixtures, uh, kitchen countertops, and all of that stuff. And pretty soon, this house will be finished, but it's really nice. We're really digging this. All right, guys, well, there you have it. The house is almost finished. Uh, we're really looking forward to when they start the site work, you know, do the driveway, uh, shape up the outside of the house, put the landscaping in and uh, cut down that area in the back. You know, all those uh, shrubs that are growing there blocking the view. So uh, there'll be more on this as we go forward. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.